Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. It looks suspicious. I heard one channel speculating that the dents in the side of the vehicle were possibly from the vehicle being run off the road, in other words, from a collision. Once again, there's this idea of preferring an exotic scenario, a foul play scenario, some nefarious activity, to the more boring but I think likely scenario of the vehicle sustaining damage when it was rolled over. So have a look. The fact that the driver's side mirror is intact in the Adventures with Purpose footage, but broken in the salvage footage, that clearly proves it was damaged during the recovery process, not before or during the crash into the reservoir. The force of the vehicle turning on its side against the mirror may also have caused the dent on the upper left side of the driver's door. And of course, when I'm talking about it turning on its side, I mean the authorities turning on its side in order to salvage it. Does that make sense? Zooming in, we can see additional damage to the exterior of the vehicle, all focused on the front. The mudguard area above the front left wheel, this was likely also damaged when rolling it onto the right side. In this enhanced image, you can see the front hood has buckled in slightly, along with what seems to be the roof of the vehicle above the windshield. In almost all the clear images of the vehicle, we see it right side up, but we really need to imagine it like this, with the rear end actually pointing up to the surface at an angle. That small rear triangular window is where Nick Rin saw Kylie. The rear triangular window, not the hatchback window. So in this episode, we're going to repeatedly ask the question, is this suspicious, right? Does it make sense to look at something and say, well, that's suspicious? Well, the alternative is, would something naturally come into that position or that scenario, right? That's the alternative. In other words, which explanation makes the most sense? So I went over it several times and I knew it looked suspicious. We Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. Obviously, if you're enjoying this analysis, if you appreciate the fact that it's fact-based, that it's anchored in reasonable and sensible thinking, you're welcome to hit the thanks button. And let's get started. So I want to be clear, this is not to try to attack or undermine or criticize or anything like that. The idea is simply to look at a set of information and ask the question, are we thinking about it the right way, right? Is it, is it reasonable and sensible, given the information we have, to think it's suspicious? Or is there another way of thinking about it? Look at that way and then say, okay, well, which one does actually make sense? Now that we've thought about it, which way of thinking makes more sense? And again, it's not to target anybody or to criticize anybody. It's a question which way of thinking about it makes more sense. Now, earlier someone said the hatch windows are tinted so you can't see inside. I think that's quite an important point is to confirm, can you see through the hatch window, yes or no? And so this analysis obviously ties in with our study of what happens to a vehicle underwater, how long does it take to sink, and what is the experience like when you're inside? Right, And that is something we dealt with during the previous live. Please watch that if you haven't already. As I say, one comment I saw pushing back against that whole analysis was, well, the hatch windows are tinted so you can't see inside. You can clearly see, um, even if there is a tint, that the tint isn't much of a factor in this image. From aerial footage, it's clear you can see into the hatch window. Also, if the tint obscured the view inside, there would have been no reason to cover the interior in a blue tarp. I do think some algae buildup would have reduced transparency and increased opacity, but not sufficiently to prevent seeing a white object inside, right beside the glass. It's important to watch the AWP footage of the dive down to the vehicle 
and note that Nick Wren approaches the vehicle from the rear and the first thing he sees clearly is the number plate. But bear in mind, he's approaching the vehicle from the rear. He's looking at the number plate, which is right by the hatch. And when he's there, he doesn't see anything floating inside the back of the vehicle. Why is that? Bear in mind, Rin is confronted with the vehicle in this position. And the reason he can't see Kylie through the hatch window isn't because it's tinted. It's because she's floating against the floor of the hatch area. Again, the question is, is this suspicious? Well, Adventures with Purpose thinks it is. So I think one way of approaching this is if Rin could see Kylie through the window, that's the side window, how could she be in the trunk? Because that would have been below the view, right? If you're looking at the vehicle through the windows, you can't see sort of below seat level, right? So by the definition, anyone who's in the trunk of a vehicle is hidden from view. So she's not in the trunk. She's not under any partition. She's simply in the back of the vehicle. But in the position she's in, she's at the point closest to the surface. Anything that is floating in a closed container is going to be at the point closest to the surface. Now, I covered it at length in the live, but let me just ask this question. If it is up to you, where would you want to be in these vehicles? If you couldn't get out, where would you want to be? If you imagine someone taking a balloon filled up with air or AWP's red buoy and you forced it down under the surface and let it go inside the front passenger door of the upturned vehicle, where do you think the balloon or buoy would end up? A body post-mortem undergoes changes causing a buildup of gases. This causes human remains to float. In some of the demos on YouTube, getting out is straightforward and easy if the window is already open or if the window can be turned down manually. You tend to see successful exits so long as they are within the first 15 to 30 seconds. But any longer and the vehicle tilts, the person inside tends to need to move somewhere else and a scenario develops where at the same time you need to be preserving breath, you also need to be exerting force, kicking out a window and time is running out. Do you agree with the assertion that it looks like AWP and the majority of the true crime community are unanimous that the circumstances surrounding Kylie Rodney's death are suspicious? I find this interesting because my expertise leads me to think it's very unlikely that it is suspicious. And yet AWP has its millions of followers believing, I guess, that someone may have killed Kylie Rodney when one AWP member was asked on a channel called Popcorn Planet if that meant he believed the vehicle was pushed in rather than accidentally driven in. Well, he pleaded the fifth. He didn't say, no, I don't think that's likely. So I think it's fair to say that AWP and all or most of the big true crime channels following this case agree that foul play is the likely scenario. I've certainly polled my own uh, subs and I think in the last poll 70% thought it was foul play. But bear this in mind, law enforcement disagrees, the mainstream media disagrees, Kylie's family disagrees, those close to Kylie disagree, her ex-boyfriend disagrees. Incidentally, this channel also disagrees. Put otherwise, all the outsiders to the story, the non-locals, are convinced this is a suspicious foul play scenario. But local authorities and locals, with uh, certainly the authorities with expertise in criminal investigations, believe otherwise. But the key insight here, as far as I'm concerned, is after the vehicle is turned, Kylie is clearly visible through the back hatch window. When Nick Rin goes down and looks and he sees the, the license plate, he doesn't see anything through the hatch window. As soon as the vehicle is turned, Kylie is clearly visible through that back hatch window. So what is going on here? I don't think that means Rin missed her when he went down. I think it means Kylie moved when the vehicle moved. But what it also means by inference is that if the vehicle didn't end up upside down, I mean at the time that it went into the reservoir, Kylie would have been in the rear area, but not on the floor, in the trunk, simply in the rear. Does that make sense? Is that suspicious or is that exactly what one would expect to find? 
Again, you need to have watched the live I did yesterday to see how I'm building up to this argument. But what I'm basically saying is if Kylie tried to kick out the passenger window, ran out of time, and then tried to follow the air pocket, right, and then um, ultimately lost her life in that struggle, the struggle against time, the struggle against the water rising, well, then you would have expected her to be on that side of the vehicle. And then where she ultimately ended up, you would also expect, given flotation and given the rotation of the vehicle, how we figure that out is when the vehicle is counter-rotated in order to salvage it, um, the remains move somewhere else in the vehicle, right? And um, that is how the remains would have been found if the vehicle didn't turn upside down. And so if you'd found it like that, would you have said it's suspicious? What's your answer to that? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.